Hi folks, uh, Anil here. Some time back, I had told that I will be starting a new section called as Ask a Code Tutor. And uh, as a part of that, I had asked you to basically post questions on Twitter and I will try to answer them as a part of this uh, new section. And uh, there have been some interesting questions and uh, I have just listed them down in the uh, mobile here. Uh, so let's see how this uh, goes. So one of the common questions that I get asked is, which programming languages are used for Android application development? Primarily, it is Java and now it is Kotlin. So you can use pretty much anything for Android application development. And if you are into cross-platform application development, then you can use HTML5, CSS3, jQuery, jQuery mobile, and other such JavaScript uh, frameworks to develop even Android mobile applications. But they won't be considered as native applications. They are considered as cross-platforms. And if you want to know a bit more about how the whole mobile application landscape looks like, I have created a video series on that. It was one of the very first videos I had created. Please do have a look at it. The next question is, how much of a Java should I know to do Android development? I personally feel you should know core Java. Now the question is, what is core Java? There are various perceptions about what constitutes core Java. I would go with whatever that is there as a part of uh, Oracle certified Java professional or programmer, OCJP certification or whatever the curriculum that you will see as a part of OCJP. And if you are pretty good at it, I would say you are pretty good at core Java. So if you know that much of a Java, you should be able to do Android application development. The next question is, should I learn Kotlin instead of uh, Java? Hmm. Let me put it in this way. Java has been the primary programming language for Android and Kotlin has been introduced very recently. So the kind of support you will get on most of the online platforms like GitHub and questions if at all you are get stuck somewhere. If you try to find the solution, most of that exists in Java. It doesn't exist as much as in Kotlin as it exists in Java. The main reason why Kotlin has not yet caught up completely with Java as far as Android programming is concerned. One, it is very relatively new. And second is most of the fresh graduates out of college are familiar with Java. They are not familiar with Kotlin. I don't think I have come up with any person who says that I don't know Java, but I know Kotlin. It is always the other way around. Most of the people know Java and then they are trying to learn Kotlin. And most of the coding or the software development work is a team effort. You are not alone person who sit and work on an application for a long time. You have a team of people who are working on a particular project. So if you only you are the person who are familiar with Kotlin and others are not, you cannot basically push the people to learn Kotlin because you want to work on the Kotlin. So until and unless there is a mandate that is coming from organization or the team that we will be migrating to Kotlin completely and better learn Kotlin, I don't see a real effort put by the developers to learn Kotlin. And another thing is most of the organizations don't really see incentive to migrate the code from Java to Kotlin. If a particular project has to be migrated from Java to Kotlin, somebody got to do it. The developers got to do it and they have to be paid. That means money. And if some application is working fine and it is one of the best application that is out there in the app store, just migrating it to Kotlin is not going to add on anything new to the project. Probably as a developer coder, you feel that it significantly improves the overall health of the source code. But most of the organizations don't think in these terms. So until unless organization has this in its DNA that they care about these kind of things, most of the projects still end up with the old legacy code bases. So it's up to you, uh, but uh, I would suggest that if you are pretty experienced with Java based Android developer, I suggest that you have Kotlin as uh, another arsenal in your skill set. The next question is uh, somebody had asked, explain callback design pattern. I had already written a comment to that particular video saying that there is not much there to explain in the callback design pattern. We use it in the interaction of fragments. So I suggest that you have a look at the video and that video is quite good on explaining what callbacks are. The next question is, should I use a job scheduler or a alarm manager? Which one is better, job scheduler versus alarm manager? For the uninitiated, what is an alarm manager? and the job scheduler both are pretty much same you have some task to be run for a future time you want to schedule the timing of that particular task execution you use a alarm manager or the 
job scheduler. Both of them do the same thing. Only the difference is alarm managers have been there in existence for quite long time and job scheduler has been a recent addition. Job scheduler is a little bit more advanced than the alarm manager. Say basically what happens is if you are doing any kind of network operation, upload, downloads and you want to make sure that you don't drain the battery, you want to do these operations when the phone is charging or when the phone is connected to a Wi-Fi mode and you want to run your scheduled jobs when these conditions are met. Checking for these kind of conditions is much more easier in job scheduler because job scheduler has been pretty much designed for this particular purpose. You can do it in alarm manager also, but job scheduler provides you a little bit more of uh, what you say control on deciding these things. And also job scheduler uses something called as a job service, which is a subclass of a service. One of the common criteria the Android documentation suggests whether to use a job scheduler or an alarm manager is if at all you have any networking related work to be scheduled, you better do it through job scheduler. Don't do it through alarm manager. Next question is what is accounts in Android. This concept basically comes from a, a sync adapter API in Android. What is a sync adapter? You have a backend and that backend has a data about a user. You have a mobile application and that mobile application needs to pull that data about that particular user whenever that application is running. The main criteria here is the data that is there on the server side and the data that is there on the mobile application side. They should both be in the sync. So to sync them both, you use a sync adapter. It is an API that you use on the Android application side. Now, to make sure that you are syncing the correct values, you have to create account to work with sync adapter. And that account is created through an API called as account manager. And that is what an account is. If you are using Facebook to sync your local data, that is mobile application data with your remote server data, you need to have a Facebook account and sync adapter will basically use this particular Facebook account to sync the data correctly. And that is what an account is. Next question is, what is the future of Android? Okay, let me make this as the last question for this particular session. What is the future of Android? The answer is nobody knows. But uh, based on what Google has been doing with Android, you can be pretty much sure that Android is going to stay here for quite a long time. See, Android is not just an operating system for the Google. Android is a platform through which Google does a lot of things. For example, if you are doing Google search, photos, Google Translate, Google Maps, Gmail, pretty much every platform that you can think of that Google has made, one of the window or the doorstep to that particular Google's service is through Android. So Android might be an free operating system or an open source operating system and you might think that it is not making much money but uh, Google is not too much concerned about how much Android itself makes money. If it can provide a solid window through which a lot of people can access other Google services and through which if they are able to make revenue that's more than enough for them and uh, the way Google has been introducing newer and newer features like they introduced artificial intelligence API and uh, they have introduced the Android Auto and they have introduced the IoT for Android that is Android things. So everything is getting converged to mobility and in case of Google everything is getting converged to Android. I don't think Google will just pull the plug on Android because they are just fed up of investing in Android. If you think about it right now there are only two major mobile platforms that is Android and iOS and these two are like biggest monsters in the mobility world. They have pretty much trumped and eaten chewed everybody else. There is no Blackberry, there is no Symbian, there is no Samsung Bada and Tizen is a joke. So these are the only two mobile platforms that are out there in the market and they are competing with one another very fiercely. And Google has made huge investment in Android. iOS came in 2007 and Android came in 2008. That is one year after iOS came. 
and they have put quite a amount of effort to compete with Apple iOS platform. And I don't think Google is going to give it away that easily for a company like Apple. So they will continue to make huge investments in Android or make more and more services available through Android. And as a developers, we will be having access to those APIs and those services of Google. Nobody knows future, but uh, so far it looks like Google is pretty much well invested in Android and the future of android looks pretty good so that's about uh, the number of questions that i had if you still have some questions uh, please do ask them you can use my twitter handle at anil v deshpande and use the hashtag ask tutor whenever i will do the next edition i will try to collate those questions and uh, try to answer them please comment down below let me know how this went if it works out well why not let's have another one so that's about it. Please subscribe to the channel, like, comment, share and take care. Bye.